OK, I'm back here. And we've got our queue of print jobs here. So let's look at what we can do with these. If we want to cancel a print job so it won't print, I can just simply go in, get the number of the job, which is in the queue up here, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. And from based on that, I can, reject, I can uh, cancel a job. Let's cancel 48. 49, 53, whoops, 63, 53. OK, now let's look at my print queue. And you see those jobs are gone. The other jobs are waiting. So if I go back and I'm only allowed to cancel my own jobs. Of course, if I'm root, I can, can I can see all jobs. I can cancel all jobs. So. Uh, to start this printer back up, I need to be root. Let's go back here, type cups enable my, the, my printer. Now, as soon as I do that, you should hear a sound. Hear the sound? Maybe you can't hear it through my microphone here. But those jobs are printing. So I can go back here. And let's t see if I've got these jobs here. Oh, the queue is already emptied. They haven't quite printed because there's a buffer in the printer, and everything is transferred to the printer, but they're still being printed. Um, and that becomes an issue. Sometimes these printers have huge buffers, and you try to kill a job on the computer, but it's already transferred to the printer, or it's half and half. And sometimes it's hard to kill jobs once they have started printing on the printer. Um, that just depends on the printer you're working in on the, and the situation. Usually, it just doesn't matter. You don't care about printing them. But once again, if you're working with gold leaf or, or well, mylar, and uh, you know, in certain print situations, you really do want to kill jobs. And, um, and that can, e even though once they've started, and that can be painful. As an example, suppose I'm printing out uh, the PHP documentation. That thing takes up a box of paper. And you know, if I print that by mistake, I want to kill that in the middle rather than going through a box of paper and toner. Um, OK. Um, that pretty well covers the, um, um, the print jobs. Oh, I might say one other thing. I did say that instead of printing, typing cups accept and cups reject, you can just type accept and reject. Likewise, in term, instead of typing cups enable and cups disable, you can just type enable and disable. Un and that was the traditional way of doing things. Unfortunately, enable is also a command in the bash shell. So just typing enable and disable doesn't work very well. Um, they have always put those commands on most of the distributions, but sometimes you have to type the full path name to get to them. Well, actually, to get to enable, not disable, but enable. And I have noticed my latest distribution of SUS has actually stopped distributing enable and disable for the printers, which is, I guess that's OK. Now. Another thing, I've done all this by the command line. And the truth is, I usually do do this by the command line. Um, but you could also do all of this through your um, GUI interface. If you're using SUS, Yatch has, uh, or Yatch 2 has all these options in there. And you can just use the pretty little interface if you want to use that. or. Uh, an alternative, which I think is actually a little bit nicer, is to go back and whoop, go back and use the uh, Cups web interface, and the Cups web interface will let you um, manage your print jobs. Well, there's no print jobs to manage, but but it will let you delete print jobs and do everything through the Cups interface too. I don't use that very often. I almost always do it through the command line. But 
you know, to each his own. Um, all of these systems work equally well, and you know, as I say, to each his own. I like command lines. So um, now, one other thing about printers that I do want to say is why do we worry about all of this? Well, suppose I have one printer on my desk, or well, actually, suppose I'm in an enterprise system. I've got a $100,000 or $150,000 printer. Believe me, we used to have those. If you have a numerically controlled device, you still have a couple hundred thousand dollar printer that you're managing. You need to manage the print queues. It's a big job and a big project. And in that case, we'll go back and think about it in terms of a cheaper printer. But suppose my printer up here above my desk, sometimes I run white paper in it. Sometimes I run red paper in it. Sometimes I run blue paper in it. Um, when I'm sending out a file that goes into the red, or when I send out a file and I want it to be on red paper, um, I don't want it to be going directly to that printer. Um, because the printer's got white paper in it. So what I do is I will build queues, just like I have here. I will build queues. And I build them as separate printers. And I will build queues, I'm sorry, um, which I will call um, my default queue, which might be ML1740. That's just cheap white paper. And then I'll build a queue called red, which is for red paper, and a queue called blue, which is for blue paper, and a queue called envelopes, which is for envelopes. And those will just be built as separate printers. And that's the way I do it. I just build those as separate print queues, just like we did earlier in the first part of the video or earlier. And then what I do is I make all of these jobs so they accept jobs. Whoop. OK. I'll make all of these so they accept jobs, but I will take and do a cups disable on all the print queues that I'm not using, that I don't have paper in. So I will keep cups queue red disabled. It's, it's disabled. Uh, cup queue, uh, the default one, the ML1740, will be enabled because the printer's got white paper in it almost all the time. And then my staff. Anytime they want to, they can print to any one of those queues. If somebody's doing something needs to be on red paper, they just send it out to the red queue uh, because the queue is accepting um, because the queue is accepting jobs. It will accept that job and it will hold it in the print queues uh, to be printed. And then when I get time, I will. Disable the ML1740 queue. Once I've disabled that, then no job goes to the printer. So I can then tear the printer apart and put in red paper. Then I go back to the terminal. I enable the red queue. All the jobs that were red then print out to the printer. Uh, once that's done, I disable that queue. I change paper back to white, or I change paper to blue. I enable the blue queue, or whatever I want to do. And I cycle through that until I get all my jobs done. Now, one of the things that does happen there is the question comes up now and then, I've got a job, and maybe I don't want to print this. Now, let's just take our queue and, oh, I disabled red. Okay. So let's go over here and send a mess of jobs to the red queue. Red um, activity 9.ps activity. And we'll do this several times. Same job, or but I, I, could, I could do you know any number. Actually, I'll do it this way. Star star dot ps. 
Now, I, I need to do that a number of times. Printer, not ready. I think I made this queue wrong. Let's go back here. Is that accepting jobs? Let's make sure this that red accepts jobs. Oops. Of course, it helps if I type better than I am. And it should be disabled because I disabled it up here. So it should be accepting jobs, and it's disabled. Let's type an LP stamp minus A and see what we've got. Red is accepting request. And I think it's disabled. We'll soon know. Let's go back here. I think that's right. Let's send a few jobs to it. OK, let's do LPQ minus P red. Red is not ready. Oh, man. Um, Cups, except red and cups disable red. Let's just go back here. Oh, wait. I don't, I'm not submitting jobs to it. Sorry about that. <coughs> no, that's wrong. Let's try this. LPR minus P. <coughs> Red start up PS. OK, there, it took it. Let's do that again and again. Now, so then I've got a mess of jobs waiting in my queue here. Minus P, uh, minus P, red, and there's my queue. Now, the problem is maybe I'm not the guy that sent those in there, and maybe I'm kind of confused on what job is what, and I kind of like to look at those before I actually print those out because uh, somebody came to me and they said, I, I gosh, I sent a bad, couple bad jobs to the printer. I'd sure like to kill those, but I don't know where they are or what they are. Well, one way of finding out is these jobs have to be kept someplace on our system until they're printed. So let's look on our system. Good place to start is let's be root because it's probably these probably only you probably have to have be root to look at everything on the system. Let's go to var and see what's under var. Under var, well, I don't know. Let's go to spool cuz var slash var slash spool has lots of good things in it. And sure enough there is an area here called cups. Let's go down to cups. And we will see basically a lot of files there. You can poke around in those files. The files that begin with C, as it happens, give you information about, get, they have meta information about how to print the job, what queue it goes into, what everything. The ones that begin with D are actually the print jobs. So if I do a GV, a GV on this file, I can actually look at that file and help the user decide whether that file should be printed or deleted. That is often a very, very useful thing to do. I would never delete that file because that kind of screws up the database and stuff. Not badly, but it kind of messes things up. Whoop, I guess I'm out of time. Um, I'd never delete that file, but what I would do is I'd use that information.